Hello everybody, Jim here, and uh, tonight I was uh, still in the neighborhood of Tachikawa in West Tokyo, uh, and it was a beautiful night too, nice and cool, clear nights, Tachikawa, great neighborhood, we get a nice little look out there at uh, the sort of main street right outside the station. Uh, I was here today because I wanted to go to the nearest uh, hard off from the station and I did and you may have seen that video already and it was a very fruitful game hunting trip it was uh, a very nicely stocked hard off good prices and everything um, and then I was gonna stop in this book off as just like a little extra side thing to see if I could find any maybe additional games here or there as you're gonna see as we browse uh, they had more games here than they had at the the freaking hard off. It was crazy. Um, so let's get started uh, with some consoles, including boxed PlayStations. Uh, this I thought was awesome. So I'll say I'll preface this as we're looking at some consoles. Um, usually, when I go to a book off, it's to look at at the at the oldest like PS2 games, and uh, maybe pick up some PS2 or PSP Vita. Or, or maybe a new Switch game for myself. Um, they usually do not have anything older than that. They, they usually do not have retro stuff, and if they do, it's a tiny little section. As we're looking at some more box consoles here, including 64, Super Famicom, Famicom. Um, so I was blown away by the amount of retro stuff they had here. Now, we're going to look in this case. This is just the case, mind you. I thought this was kind of the extent of the retro stuff they had. They just put it all in cases. We've got some Neo Geo AES games here, a bunch of boxed Super Famicom games, including Goemon, Sailor Moon, there's like PC Genjin in there, 1 and 2. There's some cool Dreamcast and Saturn stuff here, including Crows for the Saturn. What? That's really cool. A really overpriced Shenmue, Alien Trilogy, Dodon Pachi. Um, they had some killer stuff back there, even a couple of PC Engine games, but as we move on, you're gonna see, uh, the hits just keep on coming. There's, uh, more Famicom stuff down here, and some Super Famicom, including some Rockman Fantasy Zone. Turtles in Time, which they actually had a little, priced a little higher than they had at the Hard Off I just came from. It's like 300 yen more, so not a big deal. Still a decent price on it. We've got some Uruse Yasura... Some Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters, that one, uh, Rockman 5, Golgo 13, Elevator Action, so some, some cool stuff thus far. Uh, Wizardry, Goonies, other various cool things, uh, DuckTales back there. So this, uh, already, I was pretty, like, ecstatic, like, excited to see all of that, but it didn't, it didn't stop there, folks. It kept on going. Uh, Sega Saturn's Dreamcast. This I thought was cool. Sega 100 Saturn campaign box, whatever the hell that is. This cool little Dragon Quest section where they just had a whole bunch of Dragon Quest games, um, which is uh, neat, I guess. It's like a little display, including it was a Dragon Quest 2 vinyl record, which I thought was kind of cool. We've got more stuff in here. We've got box Super Famicom. We got some Famicom disc. And that's all well and good. Some PC Engine, Game Boy, other various things. Uh, Star Fox back there, Smash Brothers. Some Kid Dracula on Game Boy, Zelda, Kirby. That's all really cool. Um, so I was just sort of like elated that I found this case. I, I didn't really have any intention of buying anything in it because this book off seemed a little confused on prices. Um, but I was just like, I, I was like, cool, like retro stuff at a, at a book off this uh, uh, PC Engine Duo R for 45,000 yen which that's that's more than they charge in Akihabara it's, so on their retro stuff they were a little confused on the prices they overpriced a bunch of the uh, retro games that they had some of the consoles and things but there's like Saturn's all that various uh, stuff and then a Mega Drive here that was uh, already kind of like felt like it was gonna fall right out of the bag if I took it off the shelf 
Um, but there you go. Uh, Mega Drive for whatever the hell <laughs> the price is. I couldn't really make it out. But too much, I'm willing to bet. Um, so yeah, that was cool. So I thought that was the extent of their, um, their retro stuff. And I was just going to move on to like Switch, PS2s, and whatever. Um, but as you're going to see later, that was the tip of the iceberg. Um, but they've got, they had a bunch of Switch stuff. They had the jump, whatever. I haven't played it yet. Um, they had, uh, this I thought was kind of cool. Contra, what, what the hell is it? Contra Rogue Core? I had never even heard of Contra Rogue Core. It looks like it's a four player game though. It looked kind of cool. Uh, so there was that Contra and there's some, uh, Demon Slayer, whatever, whatever it's called. I know that's very popular. A lot of, a lot of the youngins, they like them that, uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba stuff. Uh, Jojo, uh, the Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Fighter that just recently got a release on, uh, the Switch. Omega Vampire! How oh, interesting, but no thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, I think Grand Battle or whatever battle are. Just, uh, it's been out on the PS3 and stuff for a long time, but recently got a Switch release. Actually picked it up, started playing it. It's flashy, kind of cool looking, but not a particularly good game. Um, so yeah, they just had a, a bunch of Switch games, and this was kind of what I was thinking I was going to find. I'm like, alright, I'll pop in here for like 10 minutes, look at their Switch games and whatnot. Um, their PS4, you know, and even some PS5 games. Some Elden Ring, some SD Gundam for your PS5, if you really want it. Uh, and some Yakuza. This, uh, also cool though. I actually picked this box set up on the Switch. The, um, uh, Catherine Full Body box set, which Catherine is awesome no matter what you're playing it on. I picked it up on the Switch. Play it at home, play it on the go, play it anywhere you want to. In your car, at the park, anywhere you want to play Catherine, you can do that. That was, I was doing a little thing from The Founder. Have you seen The Founder? The McDonald's movie starring Michael Keaton? It's a good one, I say, as we look at all this, this, this wall of PS4 games, which I kind of gloss over because I myself, like, I don't have a PS4 at the moment. I had one at home for a little while and then nixed it, so. Um, but there's some, uh, cool stuff in there, box sets. There's, I know there's a ton of, like, fighting games, RPGs, action adventure. You name it, they got it. There's also some DS, 3DS, Wii, Wii U. Again, stuff I'm glossing over. PS3 also glossing over to get to the, uh, the PS2 is what I was really interested in first noticing some uh, Poyo Poyo 15th anniversary um, this was pretty cool they did something here that I like when book offs and hard offs do is for these PS2 games they've divided them up by uh, genre so these there they say shooting or they say role-playing or they say like uh, uh, music or something like that um, they'll have they'll be labeled as such and then we get to what I usually like to go to the fighting games So this is the fighting game section. We've got Ultraman and we've got King of Fighters We've got all this good stuff um, We've also got this Zatch Bell for 270 yen. I think I've played one of these before and it was it wasn't great but it's uh you know one of those licensed games that people are gonna you know pick up regardless so they're dirt cheap now tekken 5 historically my favorite tekken game we used to have some wild tournaments back in the day on tekken 5 dragon ball z infinite world for 270 yen so it's like two dollars maybe i know that's a more expensive one if you pick up the um the english version but if you pick up the Japanese, it's dirt cheap. And then this, I was happy to find Fate Unlimited Codes for 900 yen, which is a fantastic game. And then also awesome, I found Melty Blood Act Cadenza. And I believe this was also yeah, like 270 yen, which was an amazing price on that. So yeah, a lot of their retro stuff was kind of overpriced, really. But then I started finding these PS2 games that were just like really great uh, deals on them. Uh, Zero, Project Zero, I guess, AKA uh, Fatal Frame. I'm actually quite a fan of the Fatal Frame series. Then we come along to some of this jewel case stuff, PS1 games in particular. 
Uh, where I quickly noticed they had this, the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, um, the fighting game. Most people know this as a Dreamcast game. The PS1 port is actually really good and actually has more, like, more little gameplay modes or whatever in the, um, the story mode. There's, like, more fun little kind of, like, mini-game things, which is pretty cool. And there's some Rock Band 8, there's Best for Family, and then there's the original. Those of you who don't know, Best for Family, that's kind of like the greatest hits in Japan. Uh, but either way, it was 900 yen, which is a good deal. And then, what was that, 3600 for X3? That's not an inexpensive game. It's not terribly expensive, but that's still quite a lot. Then they had some Saturn games, a modest Saturn selection, but uh, Shin Shinobi Din. Um, AKA, I, I can't remember what the English title was for the, uh, the Saturn Shinobi. And then Steam Gear Mash. This is a fun little kind of like isometric shooting platforming game that kind of um, is kind of overlooked. It's another one of those Japan exclusives. Even some Lunar for 1319. That's nice. And I think those Lunar games, they use that, there's like a video card that you could use that really uh, pumped up the um, visual quality. And we've got some Moiro Justice Gakuen, aka Project Justice. One of my faves. So they had some Dreamcast games, but you know, it was a lot of common stuff, nothing great. And then I was uh, always going to flip through these PC Engine games because I was not expecting to find PC Engine games in a book off. So that's cool. Um, even though they didn't have too much of interest here, they had Dragon Spirit, they had Xevious. And then this I thought was especially cool. I grabbed both of these. They're a thousand yen for some Neo Geo CD games. They had uh, real uh, Fatal Fury 3 and King of Fighters 94 with spine cards and everything for like eight bucks, seven dollars actually with exchange rates. So that's was enough. And I thought that was it. I was ready to kill the video there. And I had, I didn't even see. So here's a little area with some 50% off bargain bin, uh, like Super Famicom games and stuff. There's some Sailor Moon, other various things, Famicom. I had not noticed the the breadth. Um, look at all of this. This is all Super Famicom. They have a ton of, of boxed games, loose games. There was Super Famicom. There was Famicom. There was all kinds of stuff. I saw this and it was almost like, holy crap, what am I going to... Jeez, I'll be here forever. And then they had Super WrestleMania, brother. I do not come across this one very often, mind you. I was just, I was kind of like elated. I was like, holy crap. Super WrestleMania, complete in box for 480 yen. Yes, please, I'll take that home with me, but look at all these games. So when I saw this, I thought the video was more or less over, and then I saw all of these games, and I was like, I I'm gonna have to dig, oh, look at the Famicom games, jeez. I was like, I'm gonna have to dig through a bunch of this stuff, but how long do I want this video to be? We've got one of the Sailor Moon puzzle games box, that's really cool. There's Kirby, there's... There's uh, uh, Sango, Sangoku Shonen Papua-kun. Really fantastic Japan exclusive uh, platformer. There's Yu Yu Hakusho. There's Yu Yu Hakusho 2. There's Roku Denashi Blues for 22.28. Another Japan exclusive game based on some, some classic manga and anime. But, oh yeah. I, I saw all these games and I was just like, oh my god. This is going to be like an hour of digging if I really want to get in here and find some deals um, and again do I want this video to be like an hour and a half long two hours of just me pulling out every goddamn cart uh, and then there's 64 games boxed loose I mean it was uh, I gotta say a, a little bit epic it was a little bit epic I was blown away by this retro game section up here there was some Mega Drive games and then something that caught my eye very interesting a North American copy for some reason Sega Genesis Sonic the Hedgehog somebody turned this into a book off in Tachikawa cool you you do you dude <laughs> turn in your old uh, American games imports got some imports and then the uh, Bandai Playdia they had a Playdia game so this was nuts. So when the camera went off, I did some serious dig and actually took home a lot of games, but I didn't think it would look great on camera if I just dug through all these games for like an hour and a half. Anyway, 
we're winding down. This is about the end of the video, but it was epic. Oh my god. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time. Goodbye.